Bowser. I'm a board member. Uh, Jan and Cecil are away this weekend on a very well-deserved rate. And we are going to carry on. Let me tell you, we're not going to miss a beat this morning. And if the 11th is anything like the 9, we're going to have a fantastic morning. We've got a surprise for you. So uh, while you're standing, I'd like to uh, let's begin with a song. It's going to be on the Seattle yeah, Open Wall. And would you please repeat? Uh, I'll get it started. Let us cry out together.
here before, you know what's next. So I'm not going to delay any further. We're going to get on with it. The world famous Ride on Song.
not really awake. <laughs> I'd like to introduce another board member to you. Um, Charlotte? Charlotte, come on, would you please come up? Good morning, everyone. And let's say, take a bow of light ensemble. We always like to thank our wonderful, dedicated musicians. And at this time, I would like for all of the international visitors to stand. If you're from outside the United States, would you please stand?
to introduce our speaker of the morning. Just a few days ago, I read in the newspaper that the Catholic Church was going to allow altar girls. Part 
of this ministry. Will you listen with me to the word of the Lord as it is recorded in the readings for today? From the Hebrew scripture, I read the fourth psalm. And the writer of the psalm talks to God as if God is closely breathing, which indeed God is. It is a magnificent and awesome thing to understand that God who not created all that, not only created all that is, but is accessible to us as individuals and is there for us. The psalmist cries, answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious unto me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall say honor, suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for God. The Lord hears when I call God. When you're disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down for you, O oh Lord, alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. And then from the New Testament, uh, the familiar scene of a resurrected Christ who appears in the upper room to a group of disciples who are fearful of those on the outside. And he appears to them in the 24th chapter of Luke, records it, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, is there anything to eat around here? <laughs> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the psalm must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. There is a word in the Word of God, both the Hebrew text and the New Testament, a witness of God as God reveals the God self to individuals and to groups of persons. There is that understanding of faith in the God who created all things in harmony and wholeness and peace that is still best expressed in the Hebrew understanding of shalom. This God, this great God, is still accessible to the psalmist, as I say. And here the psalmist cries out, will we ever see good again? There's that kind of understanding as we witness in the kind of world in which we live. So much of wrong all over the world. One thing follows another and natural disasters are added to that dilemma. Someone said recently, in my hearing, why doesn't God do something about this? Why does God let things like this happen? And I had to remind them that God created the human creature in the same shalom as the rest of the balance of the earth. 
But God created the human creature with the ability to choose. It is not God's choice that the world be as it is. It is that we as human beings have chosen to hate rather than to love. Have chosen to justice rather than justice. Have chosen deprivation of people rather than sharing in equality and equity. Have chosen racism as opposed to understanding that everyone is a child of God whether they know it or not. Oh, my God. 
a great preacher, and I'm grateful to have lived in an era that heard him, reminds us of who God is. Reminds that and it's so wonderful that God is not limited to our academic or rational understanding. Praise God. They would be arrived at by mere or sheer rational reflective processes. This is the great disclosure that there is at the heart of life a heart. When such insight is possessed by the human spirit and possesses the human spirit, a vast and awe-inspiring tranquility irradiates the life. Do not shrink from moving confidently out into the choppy seas. Yes. Because God is troubling the water. God troubles the water and gives the believer to come in. That security is not achieved in hugging the shore. Security is found in the depth of the sea and the troubling of the water. and dying children, 
of children without hope and of children with hope to spare and to share. Help us to love and respect all children. Commit us in all of our different roles to seeing that no child in our wealthy nation and no child in our world whose faith we have a chance to reset will be left behind because of what we fail to do. You see, when Jesus appears in the upper room, he's not merely appearing to prove his resurrection. He's appearing to prove as a resurrected Christ that there is work to be done and that the people who are hiding in fear need to have the courage to get out to do it. Oh, 
and we were waiting for dinner, and she came to me and said, Timmy, my husband's going to be a little late for dinner. I hope you don't mind waiting, but he's in Berlin today. He is a judge in the Army. And I said, fine, I look forward to meeting him. I had known her for quite a long time. And sure enough, when he came, I met him, and I was grateful to him, to him. And he said, Mr. Kelly, hold out your hand. And he dropped a little piece of cement in it. And you know what it was. It was a piece of a Berlin wall. He said, I was in Berlin today, and I wanted you to have a piece of the wall. Now, you may be able to understand how an old history teacher would feel holding a piece of the Berlin wall. And it was overwhelming. But I find the deeper, found the deeper reaction and response was as an African American, a black woman, a mother, a grandmother. And I asked him to go on to dinner. I said, I'll be there. I just need to get out of here a minute. And I went out into the stars. And in my prayer, I, I, I asked many things of the Lord. And I held that piece of the Berlin Wall and remembered that when the Berlin Wall was announced, it wasn't announced the day before. If you know about it, tell me, because I don't remember hearing any president say that on tomorrow the Berlin Wall will come down. I know those who took credit for it, but I don't remember anybody <laughs> I don't remember any broadcaster saying it. I don't remember reading it in any paper. When it was shown on television, the people were taking, literally taking the wall down. And I remember reading in the Christian Century editorial that when the wall came down in Germany, the people sang, took it down singing among the songs in German, We Shall Overcome. Yeah. And I remember that in Prague, Czechoslovakia, when the people rose up against the particular tyrannical communist government, they did it singing, singing in Czechoslovakia, We Shall Overcome. And when the Chinese students walked the weapons of their country, some of them died, but they died singing in Chinese, we shall overcome. And when Nelson Mandela stepped out of 30 to a 27 tortuous years of imprisonment, never knowing that this day would come, that now 
a um, new board member, a person who has become very special to us. Amy? Amy Everett, give her a hand. Thank you and good morning. As Cecil says, we're going to strike while the iron's hot. Uh, I'm here to do the offering. So, uh, before I do that, the ushers are going to start from the back. I wanted to uh, share a couple of minutes about sort of my story and what Glide has meant to me. First, I'd like to thank Bishop Kelly. That was, uh, I was here at the 9 o'clock, and uh, it was incredibly moving. Uh, I didn't think it could be more moving, but the 11 o'clock seemed right. to, uh, to be more moving yeah. than the 9. Um, I have to go home and take a nap. <laughs> um, I came to Bly three years ago, um, and what I can say is that I grew up in a family where religion was not important. In fact, religion was something that other people did. So we didn't do religion. And um, I came sort of kicking and screaming into Bly and was brought um, by a friend who said, you have to see this, it's really cool, it's not like religion. <laughs> they were right. Um, and um, I came in here and in the first 10 minutes of being in Glide, um, I wanted to know where you went to join and become part of the Glide family. And that's what I did and I've gone on to be involved in the Glide family, uh, both on a volunteer basis as well as on the board of Glide. And it has truly changed my life in a number of ways. What I found out here was this is the religion of the people. That this is religion of humanity. And this is religion of learning about compassion and empathy and unconditional love. Yes. And so as the offering is going around, I urge each of you, I have a little side major uh, with Cecil that uh, will do as, at least as good a job as when he's here, as when he's not here, so don't embarrass me. But um, I would urge each of you to uh, reach deep into your hearts and to help us support that unconditional love and that empathy and the beliefs that Cecil talks about, the beliefs that Bishop Kelly has talked about, and the beliefs that we all live here as part of the community. So thank you very much. Um, we look forward to your offering. A couple of other administrative announcements today. After the celebration, please join us in Freedom Hall, where you will find tapes of today's wonderful celebration, t-shirts with Glide sayings, tapes and CDs of the wonderful, famous Glide Ensemble, a selection of Glide videos, and very special books. Let me just tell you about a couple of them. Cecil's book, No Hiding Place, I've read it, it's terrific. I urge each of you, it's out in paperback now. Please pick up a copy. New book where Glide family members are speaking out about incest and abuse. It's called Watch Out We're Talking. I've also read that book. It's incredible. I urge you to get a copy. Jan's book of poetry, Shedding Silences, and also there's Glide's children's book. I have something to say about this big trouble. I urge you to come down to Celebration Hall and join us there. Two other special announcements. The relationship group meets the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. You're all welcome to come to that. And here's one that I think is quite interesting. I like this one, that the men are needed to serve food on Mother's Day. Yeah. Which is on May 8th, for all of you that didn't know that, especially the men. Uh, but it is May 8th, and I urge the men to sign up. We need volunteers. It's a terrific day here in July and come and really honor mothers. Um, you can sign up for these activities and many more at the volunteer table again in Freedom Hall uh, after the celebration. Now here's the fun part of my job this morning. I thought I was going to do the offering and I thought I was going to make the announcements, but in no way did I believe that I was actually ever going to stand up here and get to introduce the Glide on Summer. <laughs> so, without further ado, I am proud Come on, let's go. Shut me up, keep up the yellow, shut me up. 
we shall overcome. Jesus. 